Yes. Howdy, folks, and welcome to Dead Robot Society live at BotGun51. <laughs> I'm your host, Paul E. Cooley. I will be cat herding this evening. I will be cat herding a distinguished group of panelists and Scott Roche. Oh. Yeah. And uh, on this panel, we have the great and wonderful Veronica Shigea. Hi. Hello. Good evening. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Mia. Mm, yeah. On the other side of the table, we have the infamous film director, writer, screenplay writer, and general alcoholic Charlie Brown. Bonjour, mes amis. Yeah, you need more alcohol. <laughs> and then, of course, we have a, 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 a returning veteran of the podcast, Mr. Scott Roche. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's all. It's just like the real show. All over again. It's just like it's being recorded on Google Hangouts. There it is. There it is. So, uh, uh, I guess we should start with this. Introduce yourself quickly. Quickly. Where are you? Okay. What the hell Hi. do you do? What do you do? Hi, I'm Veronica Jaguar. I am now a full time audiobook narrator. Woo! Yay! And uh, I guess for DRS fans, I am the voice of the Empire of Bones saga. <laughs> space Marines are good for me too, gosh darn it. Yeah, seriously. There's no Space Marines in Mixon's work. No? No. No? No. I, I you hear that, Mixon? <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, I'm the voice of the Secret World Chronicle podcast, written by Mercedes Lackey, Cody Martin, Dennis Lee, and me. Now in its, oh my gosh, 10th year? 9th year? 10th year? Wow. Um, and about 50 other titles you can find in various places on the internet and audible. In places like that. And Mr. Roche, who are you again? I am an author, podcaster, and uh, raconteur. Raconteur? Yeah, that's right. Um, I have uh, multiple books in my belt, and I've been on DRS. I was on DRS for, what, about a year and a half? Something like that, yeah. yeah. But I got kicked off because, you know, stuff that Good I can't things. talk about because I signed a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> <laughs> when did Terry give you that? I don't remember seeing it. I didn't write it up. I should have, though. Yes. I'm the responsible one. And uh, here we have Mr. Charlie Brown. Well, first of all, I'm a newly minted 49-year-old. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but uh, I, am a, uh, I am a writer, filmmaker, uh, editor of sorts, and um, college professor. I'm uh, from New Orleans, where most of my work comes from, and uh, I, but I live in Los Angeles and uh, try and... Hopefully, to uh, crack the Hollywood code. Haven't done quite yet, but we'll see. Need more crack. Ooh. Need more crack. Need more crack. Uh, you need more crack? Yeah, my students in South Central could probably provide it, so. Ah, uh, yeah. No, no comment. Do you know how to work that thing? Hell no. Wow. Forgot my Zoom. I'm a bad, bad host. This is why I should not be allowed on my own. Terry's supposed to be here to, you know. Yeah. Of course, he's the tech tart. He's just more responsible than I am. Yeah. <laughs> So in case you're hearing us for the first time, Dead Robot Society is a podcast that's been on for a long freaking time. I think we're yeah. coming up on our 10th year, 10 year anniversary. Damn. Yeah, which is just kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, Terry Mixon and I usually host the, the weekly madness that goes on there. And uh, since Terry's not here, I asked some folks yeah. I know to come on so we could talk about some things and hopefully give, you know, a little knowledge, a little uh, chatter, and a little laughter, or lots of laughter. What? I've got just the thing that would comfort you. Oh, God. Uh, your Pond, please tell us more. I oh. don't like this already. <laughs> <laughs> I like it at all. So from the annals no, 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 of no, Balticon no, history. No. We have a tradition. No. Yes. Yes. It is the tradition. Yes. Yes. Rise. 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 It's not even a reading or a release party. What are you guys doing? This is so you can wear them for that. It's so we will truncate the explanation this time. For the last eight years, yeah, eight years, Paul has been the recipient of a very special pair of shoes, mainly to commemorate his falling down, passing out, not able to make it back out of the bushes, Escapades back in 2009 time frame? Uh, yeah. 2008, 2000. So unfortunately the Harveys can't be here with us again, JP and Steph, but they did send along something to keep your feet on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's 
my joy, brother. <laughs> so the best way. Uh, I'll have to describe this. They're lamb. No, no, they're, they're, they're fish. fish. They're, they're called blobfish. Oh, yeah. 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 They're blobfish. They're blobfish. And they look like the strange love child between a pig and a flounder. And, and per the normal and are, traditional requirements, Paul must wear them the rest of the con. <laughs> I'm not even sure my feet will fit into these things. <laughs> I have a sewing kit. One size fits all. <laughs> and duct tape. Oh yeah. my god. Blobfish slip. Nice. No, it's, it's I just want to, I just, I kind of want to sing a song here. It started on Twitter. Yeah. With the bunny slippers. Yes, yes, yes. Bunny we should bunny slippers. slippers. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Hey, I was the one who said that they were deadly bunny slippers. At least they were deadly bunny slippers. That is correct. So be comforted, Paul, and... Carry on, yeah. Yeah. All right, now that you completely destroyed my train of thought, not that I have much. And to commemorate or commiserate, Paul Bunyan's Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Okay. And writing for and writing it for. since 2008. I'm, I've been a co-author on the series um, for books two, three, four, and then the fifth one is coming out soon. So, uh, any experience with continuity problems? <laughs> Strangely enough, last night, so we have our collaborative writing sessions every so Thursday night, and grant the collaborative tools is another panel later on the con. But simple things come up, things that you that readers pay attention to, like the color of a certain character's eyes. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching, so everyone's in this in the group chat. In Google, and then we've got stuff open and dry, and people are going through working on our different parts. And two of the authors are like, "What color is this character's eyes?" I can't remember. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. We're at the, like the, right in the very end of this book, and I can't remember what color these characters this, this character's eyes are. I think they're blue. And then the other person goes, "Well, they are now." <laughs> so my thinking back, one of the benefits to narrating. The series for that long is my continuity on the series is really really good because I've got to read it over and over. So whatever I write, I'll go back and edit, and then I'll completely forget what I wrote, and then I'll go back and read through, and then I'm editing and listening, and then putting out the podcast. So oftentimes it's the listeners who are better with continuity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's happens all the time and it's usually for podcasts it's the listeners who go you forgot oh crap yeah say hey, hey. mr roche how do you keep continuity in uh your in, in jenny deer for instance well one of the things that i did with the jenny deer books and, I, and i've done i've started doing with everything i write that i anticipate with more than one story whether it's a novel or a short story with the same characters is I make a, a story bible. Um, I, I include things like eye color, hair color, birth date. It's 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 reasonably extensive. I mean, I don't get too granular, but you know, even things like height and weight for the major characters. Not for every character, but certainly for the protagonist and a couple of the side characters. But I mean, even with that, little things creep through. So it is, and, and when, and with the Ginny Deer books specifically, there was a significant gap between the first one and the second one right. in my writing of it. It's hard. you got to go back and read through uh, the, the earlier works. So I think the best way to avoid that kind of thing um, is to have some pretty clear documentation up front um, and to consult that um, to refresh your memory. Um, but, I mean, things are going to happen. Um, stuff's going to fall through the cracks, um, but I think you just have to do the best you can. Fair enough. Um, one of the things that I, well, so, uh, I, okay, so I just finished a, a vampire novel, uh, because it's me, it's, uh, very strange and funny and weird. Um, so, but I, uh, so this is, it's a very limited, uh, third person, so you, we never jump out of the main character's head. Uh, for the most part, but uh, so I was just doing the second draft of it, which is where you scan for continuity and start something. And I had a, uh, I have a, a, a what's a, a pretension, I guess, some sort. Of, I, I wanted to never, I wanted the vampires to never breathe because they don't have to. And so I caught at least three or four times where I said <laughs> she took a breath. Like, no way! That, or so I, I would cover, but she took a breath even though she doesn't have to. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, something like that. You know, it's an old habit from when she, you know, blah blah blah. And so that was one thing I caught. Another thing is uh, this: the, the this novel is a sequel to a um, it's a sequel to a novella that I put out a while back. So I have to I have to go back to this. So when I was writing the first draft, I I just would I kind of assumed that the reader would go by, you know, that was would you know, would go back and read Quarter Moon, which was a stupid assumption. So I was like, well, I keep mentioning these two characters who were, who died in the previous one. So now I have to like explain who these people are. And so that was all in the second, you know, just like saying, like, every time I wrote one character's name, I was like, God damn it, now I have to put it. You know, so I started putting in flashbacks. And it was just, I, I just feel like one of the things that I do, and I probably should do a story bible, but because I there's, you know, there's three kinds of learning. Here comes the professor. <laughs> 
There's three kinds of learning. And there's all sorts of bullshit. Get no, 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 this is real, man. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, there's visual learning, yeah. and there's kinetic learning, and, you know, and, and other, so I visually connect, I actually Two. write things down. Well, there's another one, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it should be. I'm oh, sorry, thank you. I, I'm sorry, I think I'm, I, I just Rex Perry that one. Uh, <laughs> But I would I, I, in this other work that I'm doing, and it's a uh, there's a lot of names, and I chose to to choose a, a, a Crimean, it's you know inspired uh, place. So there's a lot of Russian names. So I, I I've taken to like have a, just having a piece of blank paper and writing the names down so that I can help myself remember, uh, and that actually you know it helps. And, least, and then even when I even when memory fails you, it's still like right there, and I keep it as long as. As long as I'm writing that piece of paper, that part of my notebook is going to be wide open. So, at the very least, I will have a I have a quick reference right there. Okay. So that's one thing. I wow. We'll get into what I do in a minute. Mm -hmm. I have another question first. Plotter or pantser? Hybrid. Hybrid. Plotter or pantser? Increasingly plotter. Uh, yeah. Charlie. Uh, increasingly pants, sir. Especially, increasingly it's, especially with uh, screenplays. I find I'm pantsing screenplays and I'm outlining my fiction. Okay, so just a quick statement, if you don't know what the difference is. A plotter is somebody who outlines what it is they're going to write. A pantser is somebody who sits down and goes, wow, wouldn't it be cool if, and just goes off and uh, on the real world. So hybrid. <laughs> hybrid because I have to collaborate with three other people. Correct. But when you're not collaborating with three other people, are you, are you a pantser or a plotter? I like the comfort of an outline, but the outline just tells me where I need to go. It's okay. guidelines. Yeah, suggestions. guidelines. Suggestions. I'm, I'm that way, too. And you're increasingly going plotter? I am because, well, with, with novels. Okay. Um, with short stories, I, I, I pretty much stay, stay pantser. But for novels, I find that it helps me with the, with the editing. It reduces the amount of editing that I have to do, cutting stuff out. I write pretty lean anyway, but it definitely helps to have the structure. Now, I, I'm not married to the outline. Like, if I want to change something, I will. But generally speaking, I try and stick to the outline. And by outline, I'm, I'm testing various things. Like with the current thing that I'm I'm outlining, it's really just outline. Um, but yeah, there are lots of different ways to outline, and I think just find that having a structure keeps me from rabbit trails. Okay. Uh, so when I plot, I plot a lot like my uh, I plot a lot like my screenplays. Uh, what I found with my recent novels, what I'll do is I will plot to a point and then write. Plot to a point, yeah. Then when I reach that, I was like, okay, now what do I do? And then I plot again, and and so it 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 it's a spr you know, sprint of plotting, a sprint of of writing, and back and forth until it's over. I do the classic academic uh, outline, Roman numeral one, oh, fill in the blank, God. ABC, fill in the blank, Roman numeral two. I do it exactly that way. It's boring as hell, but it, it works for me. And uh, I will basically, basically, I like I do it as as plot point, scene, 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 plot point, scene, 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 and that's that generally works out for me pretty well. Well, the reason why this came up is because some lunatic who's on his panel <laughs> is basically writing that doesn't hear it, yeah. yeah, no, a 300,000 word story oh, yes, in yes, three yes. or four installments, first of which would be this one. And so, oh, that so, lunatic. Yeah, that lunatic. <laughs> so the, the question was, how do you keep everything straight if you haven't written it yet? <laughs> Boy, there's so much implied. <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, and uh, how do you make sure you don't write yourself into a corner that you cannot get out from the, for the next book? Mm -hmm. Paul, none of us have our PhD in psychiatry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't require psychiatry. It requires a degree in bullshit. Oh well, no, that's well. an English degree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that yeah, English degree. Yeah. English degree. There we go. Bullshit artist. Bullshit artist. <laughs> bullshit. Theater major is making it sound right. The whole well, the English major, theater minor. Bullshit out. Uh, English, 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 English major English. psychology minor. No, 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 sociology, <laughs> thank you. No, no, I am a psychology minor. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well, I, I was saying, it's like, do you need to lie down on the couch, Paul? Because you know, we can we can help you out. No, no, we're, we're not. Doing a little massage. I did, I did. We're not here to do Rose, why take it dark? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you obviously have never listened to our show before, Charlie. Uh, so, uh, uh, and never. <laughs> <laughs> what show is this again? Why am I here? Why? Uh, and, why is, and why is massage taking a dirt? Because, you know, it's massage is good. Uh, Roche, this is why we can't have you on the show anymore. Uh, All right. We can't, so. have, we can't have nice mustaches. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> have you seen Terry's beard? I, I have. That's awesome. I will see, I will yes. see it live in a couple Terry's of months. Do you need to see Terry's uh, beard? Right? Enough about Donna. Uh, oh, what? I missed something. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Okay, so we're moving on. Damn it! What did I miss? Series gear, Don makes it. Oh, 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 oh! Wow. wow. This yeah. is the part we explain the joke. <laughs> Don't explain the joke. <laughs> Feel like we. We're off the rails. So, um, so, yeah, so, 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 my question to this genius. If there were rails, I need the smart one. My, <laughs> my question to this genius who's writing this 300,000 word novel in three parts <laughs> yeah. is four parts. Maybe. It's going to be four parts. Why, why are you not writing a complete arc within each novel? Because What do you mean, complete arc? Well, I've read the first novel and it's. Amazing, awesome as you will. Thank you, suck up. <laughs> Continue. But it ends on a cliffhanger. Yes. <laughs> so the arc isn't really complete. It can't be complete. It's it's and, and, and nobody <laughs> likes nobody likes being left hanging. Oh, no. I, I think my sales uh, uh, prove otherwise. Oh, 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 well, some of the reviews. Yeah, some of the reviews are like, "Why the fuck, Willie?" <laughs> I've been asking myself that for a Yeah. Long. So, so what was your what was your logic in doing it this way? Money. Yeah. Honesty is good. Yeah. It's very honest. It's cool. If I if I sit down and I, I write a three hundred thousand word novel, it takes me a year. That's a year with no fucking income of any book being published, any audio book being out there, any income coming in. I'm a full time writer. So I wanted to write this story, and when I started it, I did not know it was going to turn into this. Because see earlier comment about pantsing, <laughs> and so when it turned into this, I'd already sold the book and was like, "Oh shit! Um, well, I can ditch the entire rest of the story that I wanted to write, or I can say okay, we're going to go this way." <laughs> so I went this way, and that's why we're here. Fuck it, we'll okay. do it live. There we go. We're so here's 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 my question to you. Here's my question. So, all right. So we've you've you've the stat. Yeah. So so with each step, with each next book, now that we're now that we're two in, you have established that you have at least an arc enough to get from word one to word whatever. Sure. Okay. So. And each of the novels. Does so have do an arc. you? So at, at any at any point, this is the big question: Do you have, do you have the final act, in your head? Do you know what the final act is going to? be? Yes, unless it changes again. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, uh, so so these two novels, not not that one, but the two, the novel that just came out, and you're in, as we talked about, for listeners of the Red, Dread Robot Society. Dread Robot Society. <laughs> Dread, I, I, I got to talk to Terry. We got to change the name to the Dread, Dread Robot, Robot Society. Society. Yes. Uh, and I, I haven't even been drinking. Um, <laughs> I see the problem. Now. Yeah, there's the problem. I've become way more focused when I'm drinking. Um, Anyway, so you're so you have two novels in the big swampy middle. That you're two have two novels. That Actually, are the, big the second book was the the big yeah. swampy middle. So you so you think you're gonna finish it in three? Depends. Uh, yeah, I do. I have no finger string. It was blocking your it was blocking your face anyway. Wow. To Papa Legba. Wow. Yes. Just. Throwing stuff everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So for for okay, fine. So we have the great big the, the great big swampy metal. Right. Okay. Yeah. We have the final act. Yeah. However, this great swampy middle can continue on for quite a ways. Yeah. Okay. So instead of a swamp, you're you're in an ocean. You're you're in the middle of the ocean, and you're trying to you're Christopher Columbus looking to land. Well, I know how it's going to land. I think. Well, Christopher Columbus thought he was going to India. Well, that's true. <laughs> I know I'm going to Pluto. I know that's. I know oh, that's you're going, going to Pluto. Okay. Uh, Unless it's Neptune. Unless it's Neptune. Or Uranus. That's too far away from the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Roche. <laughs> <laughs> again. 
<laughs> what are you, 40? He's going up. Yeah, I think he's going up here, and this is where he's going. Well, uh, hey, 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 family show here. Hey, hey, family show. Hey, family hey, show. Hey, win. Win. What kind of win? Mind is fun. The only, the only. <laughs> so that's how that, so that's what happens in that case. Hey. hey. This is the guy from North Carolina. Anyway. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, I went there again. Better North Carolina than Louisiana. What? Well, there is that. There is that. There is we ain't been in Mardi Gras, bitch. Or Florida. Uh, Florida, so, well, I would say Kentucky, but that's just. Oh, that doesn't make any better. Right? Right? No. Oh come on, Charlie's got mad love, bad gator love, <laughs> so, bad gator love. So to bring it back, you're bringing it back. So to bring it back, um, oh, so we knew so this was gonna. You have a three book. You have a three book. You have a three book contract, or is it kind of open ended? It's or? however many books it takes to finish the damn story. And so we're talking Game of Thrones no. here. <laughs> no, 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 no. It has to end. It has to end. It will end. It will. I know how it ends, I think. Maybe, perhaps. Jesus. So, okay. So, <laughs> let's return. Let's Welcome return to, to my this, world. Let's return to the subject again. Okay. So, you've got. All right, my here's my question. Since we, all three of us have some sort of structure that you pretend not to have, oh, I do have a structure. I know you have a structure, but you're saying for the most part you go. Why can you not sit down and at least give yourself the skeleton, to, the skeleton to get you know to get it all connected? Well, if I okay, so it, it is, I mean, I, I've heard Terry say that it's boring to write if he does it. Is that the same for you? If you if you outline something, was it then just too duh? I'm just too bored to write. No, because the honest answer is I outline and then I take the outline and I throw it in the trash and never look at it again. Oh. And then while I'm writing, I will outline a couple of chapters ahead because while I'm writing, I discover new things that I want to do or I have new ideas because strange things will happen, especially yeah. since I'm doing this far future sci-fi bullshit now. Right, right, right. It's, it's, you have a lot more opportunities to throw in some really crazy stuff. Okay. That serves the story quite well that you didn't think about until you started writing it. Okay. All right. So, so, so there, there is a madness. Okay. madness. There is a madness to your madness. So you say, so you're saying, all right, I've, I've, you've gone through the act of plotting as an intellectual exercise to the, for the most part. You've gone through some Active as an yeah, there's exercise. A, B, C, D, and then there's Z. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so wait. Actually, 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 I have I had a little bit of an epiphany. This is a little bit like we're looking at this as a traditional trilogy, when in fact it's a lot more like a TV series. That's the way I've been trying to think of it. Right. So with with one thing I've noticed over the last couple of years is a lot of authors, not just the crazy ones, are writing series more episodically but but they're tied together so there is a, a larger arc and each book is an episode of the TV series so is that kind of what you have in mind for this or is it just that you're you need to drain the swamp um, okay so the first answer is the right answer by the way <laughs> the first answer is the right answer Yes, I meant it to be TV seasons where they leave you on a cliffhanger, so you have to wait the entire time and you hate the writers and throw things to TV because then it gets delayed and doesn't show up when you're expecting it back in September. It doesn't show up until February and they cut two more episodes off and then you, everybody gets pissed off the internet, points on fire. And oh, don't, 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 don't forget they run the episodes in the wrong order. Oh, that too. They run the episodes in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> I just broke Bondi. <laughs> I think the, I mean, Secret World Chronicles, how many arcs are in it? A lot. Oh, sweet. I hated you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and is there an overarching yes. arc? Yes, there's an overarching arc. Now, this, the way that we, so we outline it, and every, every book has an arc. And the way that we do it, we actually use um, the... Uh, Blake Snyder's book, Save the oh, Cat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you just said the yeah. cat. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. So, because, and so we use that beat sheet as an outline. And it's the 15 beats for each, for, each, um, for each book. And then within each book, the chapters are episodes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the stories can range from, I think the shortest ones are a thousand words to one 
honest to goodness story episode is 60,000 words in wow. book four. 60,000 words for one. 16? 16. 16. Okay. 16. It's going to break into 10 podcast episodes when I get back and start hearing Good Jesus. Oh, Good Lord. Pobrecita. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we use that and every, every character, well, every character or character pairs have their own personal character arcs. And so by the end of each book, they have to be at a certain place. And there's... Too many characters. The, that one, there are 30... The next, that 60,000 <gasps> 60, word... Chapter. Chapter, it really is. There are 35 separate characters that have speaking pieces. So... You can worry about continuity in terms of writing. I also get to worry about continuity in terms of voicing with series. Oh, yeah. Been there, done that, and I oh, suck at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. remembering what each one of those 35 sounds like, or coming up with new voices to make sure that they're consistent, going, oh, crap, where do they show up again? Luckily, mm -hmm. as one of the writers, I can figure out where they're going to show up again. Mm -hmm. But writing episodically helps. Um, and the beat sheet does help because it doesn't say how long, uh, you know, the... the Outline piece doesn't have to be a certain length. You have to get to that. Here's the information that have to get through. Right. Here's what else happened. Okay, here's here's yeah. here's here's a question. Yeah. About, oh, sorry. Right. Me first. <laughs> Age before beauty. Go ahead. All right. Oh, that's fine. So here's my question. This I think this this may help you all because I think is does is Mercedes is Mercedes like the judge. Is she, does she have some sort of final say when all of this is going on? Is she kind of the one that can kind of like gavel and say, no, we're not doing that? Or is it, you know, or, or do some of the others, or is that, you know? The, the way that it goes, the way that that series gets written is everybody has their own characters. Okay. And we all, okay. we all, That's um, okay. we all contribute as to what we want our characters to do. Right. So I know for the few characters that I write, I know where they want to be at the very end of book five. <laughs> Um, so it's really uh, an and, and MMORPG. That's yes. how it all started. I started yeah. playing video games. Mm -hmm. See, look where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but she she does have, I don't know, she, she, there's some recommendations, but it's right, okay, I don't know, what do you want to do? Okay. And my response is, can I sit it on fire and blow it up? <laughs> yes! Sweet! And then I get to spend pages up one step up. And then you make your then you make your listeners cry because things happen. Oh, you, you just wait till the rating on Monday. All you get to do is all you have to do is blow stuff up. That's it. I want to tell people. So my question I've is I've got the one job! <laughs> That's the job I want! I read superheroes. Oh, and I, I wind up killing off characters that people then cry about. <laughs> I've never gotten into my books. So, uh, so my, uh -huh. so my yes, question, so my episode. question for you is, uh, and I saw you mention something about this in one of your social medias. Um, that so, do you go back and sort of re-listen to bits by characters to keep the voices straight? How do you? Yes. Okay. So, like with not so much with Secret World, I've been doing it for long enough that I know the characters very well. Um, with Empire of Bones. <laughs> there's there's certain like types there's certain I guess stereotypes of characters but two there are two characters that show up um, halfway through paying the price that didn't show up at all since the first book and I had to go I have no idea what they sound like oh, and wow. so I have to go back and listen and grab that sound clip there are other voices where I make notes and go this set you know this person has a voice like this. Um, the the Omega computer character that shows up um, in Paying the Price. I imitate the uh, test track prompt from Epcot. That's what it sounds like. Because like, I was like, and I had I had a break where I had recorded for two weeks. I was like, oh, I have no idea what it sounds like. Go back and play it. And I hear myself say to my hello. I'm like, oh. Test track, that's what it is. So, nice. just those quick descriptions. Most of them I get away because they're kind of like stock voices in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's what you call that. 
So yes. that you don't sound crazy. Yes. Okay. Stop voices in my head. Other people call it schizophrenia. Yeah. She calls yeah. it stop voices. Yeah. Well, there, there's spoiled princess voice. There's grumpy princess's boyfriend voice. There's... So, the... I narrated two epic fantasies for Jennifer Melzer. The same voices that I use for her main princess character and the uh, main male character, the romantic love interest, they're the exact same voices that I used for Princess Kelsey and Tally. Oh, okay. It's interesting because when I was doing Derelict, I started in the second book, I was like, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first one, which is actually babble into a file, mm -hmm. export it, so then if I take a break, I can say, how the hell, who does this sound like again? Yep. And then play it and get into the voice. Mm -hmm. And this and this ties back into, for me, the overall question about the writing piece, which is character voice, maintaining character voice. And that's one of the things that was like the Jenny Dare series, where I have a character who is aging up <coughs> in each book. Her voice is going to change. Um, is the voice of the narrator the natural narrative as far as like a, a use of speech? Are you going to start using more grown-up words as you go along? Like no, you but did in Harry Potter. Or no, you? but there will. Well, no, not necessarily. Well, maybe some of the jargon will, will get a little more intense. But um, the narration so far for the two books and probably for the third book is going to stay largely the same. But her voice, because it's it's close. It's close third person, mm -hmm. so I don't have to worry too much about, um, so if I were doing first person, definitely I'd have to make that happen. Because it's close third person, I don't have to worry as much about the narrative voice, but her voice and her, her everything about her has to amp up a little bit and age up a little bit, but all the characters around her are adults, and so they're, they're going to stay largely the same. Um, but yeah, it's hard to, when you, especially when you take a long break, it's not just about things like, you know, uh, for, for Esho St. Clair, he's got these magical bangles that he wears, and I know exactly what each one is and what it's made of and what it does. That's easy. The hard part is, you know, uh, keeping his voice the same, keeping Sean's voice the same, keeping... What turns of phrase do they use? Yeah. What's their speech cadence? What's... Yep. And I don't have a way of capturing that. Oh, yeah. That's a little more, more difficult to do. I think the... The bet, Terry gets away with this very easily because he takes very short breaks from Empire Bones because mm -hmm. that's that's basically his money maker, and that's cool. I haven't written a black book in a year and a half, yeah. so when I dive back into evolution again, it is going to be it is going to require me to go back and look at how every how I wrote every single one of those freaking. Oh, okay, you're you're going to bring all those characters back together. I so have everybody, to. Everybody who's alive. Is I back. have to. All Jeez. the survivors. All three of them. <laughs> uh, actually, I think there are twelve of them. You, yeah, you, you got a lot easier on you know, one of the one of the things that one of the things that I do because I you know because I do outline, but one of the things that I'm constantly doing is I'm not editing as I go, but I am at least re rereading the previous chapter. I do that a lot. In fact, you know, I will always reread the first chapter before I start writing again. You know, before I dive back into writing, so that I at least. Can that makes me feel by by give by you know one it does help with the editing pass a little bit, but also it's like okay you're now you you know because I, I write voice driven fiction now I'm back in that voice now I'm back in that headspace by reading it and then I can kind of jump in and and continue to continue to roll so that is also part of the continuity for me is voice you know not just voice but also. Also, okay, what kind of speed are you at? Is this a fast scene? Is this a slow scene? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to speed up? Do I need to flash back? Do I need to do this? And that, you know, by having, by having a, you know, it's almost like directing a film in the sense that, you know, when you're a director and you're working on a film, the scene you're shooting is not necessarily the scene that came, you know, after the scene that you Yeah, you're wrote. not shooting in order. You're not shooting in continuity at all. So as a director, I have to know the entire script, even if I didn't write it. I have to know the entire script. I have to be able to act and I know what's now. And it's my job to say, you know, that stupid line, what's my motivation? It's fucking true. They have to know what their motivation is. They have to know what came before. Because if they're not acting in that moment, 
you're not, you know, if they're thinking about what's happening before, they're, then they're losing the moment. So again, I, you know, so when you look at writing as film directing, it's just you, you've got to keep that continuity, but you just don't know what comes after yet. So by constantly, you know, cycling through the previous, you know, writings, you know, I'll go two, three chapters back. Just Are you telling start. me you read your own dailies? Yes, I do. I read my own dailies. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I do. Well, one of the things that I do, at least with some of my characters, is related to filmmaking. Because a lot of times when I write something, if it's, if it's, particularly if it's a scene that I have had to spend some time really brewing over for a couple of days because I wrote myself into a corner, I actually play out the scene in my mind like it's a, like it's a movie clip. And in some cases, I actually assign actors to characters. So Avery Brooks... If there was ever an Escher St. Clair movie, we would play Escher. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can see that. So you know that, that's, thing, that's a that's a mental trick I sometimes play is assigning an actor to a character, um, or some or really envisioning that main character until I can picture them in my mind, so that even if I don't have a main actor that I can do that with, at least I have a very clear mental picture of what they look like and how they move, and that informs how they speak and what they do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do that. I definitely do that too. Yeah, there's a couple of like actors that, and especially in the vampire novel, I was like picturing. I was like, okay, this person will play this one and this person. So, so that I I would at least have I would at least have that makes it that you know that makes character description easier because mm -hmm. you already know what they look like. For the yeah. most part, mine are kind of faceless in my mind. There's very few of them. Really? Yeah. yeah. If they, if they do have any spe specific features, that's what stands out. But basically, it just looks like a blank face. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if that's related to pantsing and, uh, and outline. I honestly don't know. I, so, I don't know. It, it, it's not always like that, yeah. but it frequently is like that. Huh. Especially with the, the books like Derelict and the Black Series. Where uh, you have a lot of I, that's funny because uh, maybe it's because I am a visual learner. And it's like, you know, because I have to know what my characters look like in order yeah. to, for me to write them. I because, really yeah, I have, to, I have to see them. Even if they're not based on actors, I have to look at them and I have to... I have to cre almost like, give myself created memories. I, I, I usually don't know who the hell they are or what they're like until I actually start finding out by through my fingers. Huh. Now huh. sometimes that's crazy. That's sometimes when I name a character after a person that I know, that makes it a little easier. Yes. Because even if because even if they're not even if they don't speak the same as their counterpart, um, at least I, again I have a. So, like, the, but my favorite example of that is uh, in dirty in my Dirty Magic uh, New Orleans story. Um, I cru I literally crucified James McCum uh, Justin McCumber, yeah. um, and even though he doesn't have a speaking part because he's dead at the beginning of the story, I just <laughs> loved picturing Justin McCumber crucified. Um, there was just something about that that appealed to me. Upside down. No, 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 he wasn't. Right side up. No, it was right side up. Yeah, because it was it was imposed over the... Pierced uh, side and everything. Yeah, no, it was imposed the over the... Is, he's the founder of the Dead Robots Society. <laughs> yeah. He was, yeah, he was imposed on the on the Jesus in the in the Jesuit church. Mm -hmm. uh, and, which, Scott wrote about the Jesuit church in New Orleans, not knowing that my mother used to volunteer in the Jesuit <laughs> church. <laughs> so I, unfortunately, was picturing my old high school principal who was nice. running the church when my mom was there. So, oh so there's that. That's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. Yeah. Well, if you're right, if you're going to continue writing series and everything else, are there any other tips and tricks that, you know, any advice you have to other writers out there who are looking in to do this? Because a lot, I mean, a lot of the writers that we that we come across are writing close third person, mm -hmm. the writing in first person, mm -hmm. and usually they are writing very strict episodic. Mm -hmm. But once you get out of that and you start including more characters where you have nine or ten POV characters in a book, when you start writing something larger, when you start writing something like a Peter F. Hamilton uh, style series or something along those lines, the rules change. Yeah, mm -hmm. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean my, my literary novel, which is 106,000 words, has eight point of view characters. And, um, and yeah, that was, that was a lot of work. Because I had to, you know, and I, I'm writing different races, I'm writing different uh, sexes, you know, and, and whoever, you know, uh, and some cultural differences. Most of the characters were from New Orleans, but I did have one specific one who was not from there. So when I wrote those chapters, I did have to have this kind of seeing things for the first time character, as opposed to the other seven who were used to New Orleans. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, and again, it just helped that, you know, not every character was me, but yeah, it was like, all right, this person, you know, well, one of the, you know, it's funny, one of the, one of the relationships in this novel is an interracial relationship, so everybody goes, it's about your wife, right? It's like, well, it's kind of not, <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's like, no, it's actually my friend who's this actress, and I was like, I'm writing her, you know, so if, you know, if I ever get to make this movie, it's, you know, I'm casting her, so, and that, that sort of thing. And, you know, so, and then, you know, I was using my best, one of my best friends and his parents, or, you know, so, so it was a lot easier for me when I had all of these points of view characters to, yes, that I'm picturing them at all times, mm -hmm. that I know exactly who they are so I don't have to work too hard to restart. And, of course, it helps that one of them was me, oh, and that another one was me. And I think that's the concept. And a third one was me. <laughs> the concept of the memory palace, which is a, a good, oh, uh, a good uh, mnemonic device, you know, you, you hook. Uh, these characters to something, whether it's a, a sense or a memory or an actor or something that helps you get back into that headspace when you're writing that person. I, I, I tend to avoid writing that many multiple point of view characters for that reason. I mean, it, it, I want to maintain continuity, and if I had 10 point of view characters, I don't know that I'm a good enough writer to do that yet. In a ranch. In a convention. Stretch. I said yet. I said yet. Stretch. You know, the last time I said that to you, you, you still complained. I'm always going to complain. That's well, the true. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's, I, just, I, I just, bet, well, yeah, Scott, he's going to open his mouth again. I just want <laughs> a quarter inch in diameter. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, just, just yeah. ignore them. Or ignore him. Right. So, having the, having the story Bible and having the kind of character snapshot sheets is good. Yeah. But... It's not something to get like bogged down at the beginning yeah. with. No. It, it's it's the sort of thing like you know you write. Um, you could get away with writing a third of the story, outline or pantsing or what have you, and then stopping and going and documenting what you've done. Yes. If you like it, fantastic. If you don't, then you see what you've done, and that way you can see what you've written to similarly. And if you need to go back and read it aloud to yourself, or one of the other things that I like to do is just. In that character sheet, dialogue. Just let the character talk about something completely ridiculous. And he said, she said, nope, just the dialogue. Just like you hit record and then it transcribed right on the page. Because then you really do get their mannerisms, their cho chosen vocabulary. Let them rant in your head mm -hmm. for half a page, and you'll learn more about them. One, one of the things I did with the first in the book to kind of get that was... Uh, as part of the snowflake method, you take, uh, you can take a character, each of the major point of view characters, and write a brief synopsis of the story from their point of view in their voice, um, and that was very helpful, especially with getting Jenny's voice, and the and the main antagonist's voice in the first and second books was to write a brief, a brief, you know, just a paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs, whatever, in their voice from their point of view. Hmm. Even if you never actually include that in the book, you've got that yeah. capture. Yeah. Well, see, now you give me an idea for another episode topic, which I will have to, you know, beat Terry over the head with. What about, uh, what about going old school? This is not something I've done, but what about really going old school and uh, break out your Dungeons and Dragons books and just make character sheets for all your characters? I use Scrivener to do some of that, but I don't get... I mean, you know, do, go, go ahead, do dexterity, do constitution. Oh, no, yeah, that might help you. That's <laughs> not my wrong way. Yeah. I mean, there Why would that not help you? Yeah. No, no, it totally does. I mean, if you want to get that in depth with it... Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I'm so just John Morgan, who's a fifth level, like, fifth level thief, and I'm just throwing out a little idea. Just sitting down and taking your head and writing just in paragraph form those yeah. details, yeah, 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 and then yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, of backstory right. as you're doing the description. Mm -hmm. Are you chewing senior or doing it? Of course you are, but at yeah. least you've got something to reference you can go back to. Yeah. And it's good if you're stuck somewhere. Then okay, well, what was you know, what was their childhood like? What's their favorite movie? Why is it their favorite movie? What's their favorite hobby? Why is it their favorite hobby? And then you have you know maybe you're not going to tackle that in this book, but later on that could be relevant, and you can just you know, pull it out and use it. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> yes. So so one of the things that as writers you're always challenged with is time, and when you're starting to write, obviously you're the only one really involved in your universe. But why not open it up? And possibly do a wiki where you document all this in a wiki format initially, and then as your fan base grows and grows and grows, you open that up to your fans to allow them to self-document 
your universes and worlds and characters and everything for you to help you. Yes, I, I know. I will find volunteers for that in, in, in the near future. I mean, there. So it worked so for Martin. Sigler. Worked for George R. R. Martin. Sigler did that. Um, yeah. The uh, mm-hmm. the Flash Pulp podcasts. Um, they have a community driven wiki for theirs because that's not just one story. That's uh, five or six different story threads that that Jared e. Skinner um, wove together and is continuing to weave together. Um, Flashpulp.fm to to shout out to them. Um, so yeah, if you can get your fans to do that for you, absolutely. Or even if you do it yourself, absolutely. It's a wikis are a good tool. We need to wrap this. Up. Yeah, we need to wrap this up. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you would like to send us communications about how terrible this panel was, you can send us a sh- an email to show at devrobotsociety.com. You can tweet at us at Paul underscore E underscore Cooley because Terry is too much of a caveman to use Twitter. Or you can you I can join you can join our Facebook group, the listeners, the Dev Robot Society Seri- podcast. Seriously, one of the best fan communities. I'm, glad, is. I'm glad you actually did it. I'm glad you actually did it without without stumbling. Oh, uh, well, that's because I changed it around this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please please join our, our Facebook group if you have questions about writing. You want people to look at things. You would not believe the number of resources, and we have a lot of very, very dedicated, talented people on there that aren't Terry and I. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you yeah. can find us. Yeah, you got you got a two name just for the David Wood Photoshop alone. So. <laughs> no more Sailor Moon Cooley. I will Sailor Cooley. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a problem. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you would like to uh, also um, uh, join our Patreon for as little as one dollar a month, you can. Receive exclusive access to uncut, unedited episodes. It's worth every penny. As well as exclusive <laughs> bonus content that we put up there, including a live monthly show that we do off of YouTube. So, with that, I will thank my wonderful panelists, Veronica Giguier, Monsieur Scott Roche, Monsieur Charlie Brown, and again, I am Harsick Award winning, best selling douchebag, Douche Paul and with that, I bid you adieu. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. Good.